For many years, my life has been controlled by an invisible illness. Perhaps recently, with the mass weight loss, it has become more apparent that I am sick. However, most of the time, my appearance would never suggest that I'm somebody who's chronically suffering. This story may not be the most poetic, classically structured, print-worthy, or meet the approval of all the English majors out there, but one thing I can promise is that it's very real and unfiltered. I suppose the one good thing about living a life that is in constant state of chaos is you don't really have time to crave acceptance or entertain the disapproval of others. It's funny how that pans out. In late 2018, I had my wisdom teeth removed. Post-surgery, the life I once knew became a fantasy. The knowingness that I could never wake up, jump out of bed, hop in the shower, and run out the door is haunting. It's such a foreign reality that I almost resent who I used to be because I can't be him anymore. At the time, I wanted nothing more than to be someone else. Somebody better, smarter, better looking, famous, <laughs> you name it. Not even realizing how fucking blessed I was to wake up daily and not suffer. It's unclear why the surgery was the trigger of all this. However, it's likely these conditions were already existing in me on a smaller scale, and the surgery fast-tracked the inevitable. From the outside looking in, it's understandable that others won't fully realize how debilitating these conditions are. For the most part, they're fairly unfamiliar to the vast majority of the world. The concept in general is difficult to grasp. It's hard to relate to extremes that aren't in your handbook of personal experiences. As difficult as it is to reflect, I've experienced both sides of this life. I've had the pleasure of living out my dreams to a certain degree, done what I've loved for most of my life, and prior to this, I rarely battled any major physical health issues. One thing that I can say is someone who's been an extremely mentally woke, cognitively aware individual, what I once thought the definition of suffering is, was so far in left field it's not even funny. We can't truly learn the depths of somebody or something by reading it or even seeing it for that matter. It does provide a visual understanding perhaps, or at least conscious awareness that pertains to the illness and conditions, but living it is so, so incredibly different. Everyday things are impacted, things you would never even think of, like how you shower or the amounts of food or foods you can eat. Even just the simple task of going outside and standing in the sun is almost undoable now for me because my body just freaks out anytime there's a minor fluctuation in temperature. Some may say, if we can't comprehend it by learning your story, what's the point? What's the point in even listening? The important thing throughout all of this is people like me, we don't necessarily need you to know the depths, to be honest. From my personal heart, I pray to God you never have to learn the exact degree that this suffering consists of. What we do need the world to know is that we're different. Our lives are very much separate from the ordinary world, and it's so fucking important that people at least open their mind to accepting that life for us is much more difficult than it may seem to the naked eye. If my story can help open the eyes of someone that was once closed off or mentally dense, that's a huge victory. One of my conditions is called dysautonomia. To put it simply, the autonomic nervous system is basically the control panel of our body that regulates blood circulation, heart rate, all the important stuff that should happen automatically. People with this condition have a compromised control panel. So even things like rolling over, standing up, putting on socks, can send your heart rate from 60 beats per minute to 180 beats per minute plus in an instant. Another condition I have is called erythromalalgia. This one's a son of a bitch. It's basically burning of the hands, feet, ears, and anytime my body changes in temperature, my chest, arms, forehead burn and itch like you couldn't believe. To put it into accurate terms, it literally feels like I want to rip my skin off because it's as if I'm burning from the inside out. The only way I've ever managed to control this is by living in cold climate, 24-7. Anything above 63 Fahrenheit and 18 Celsius, and my body's in the danger zone. This is easily the worst condition that I have and basically prevents me from doing most things. The burning sensation of my extremities are far more frequent and can't be avoided by cool temperatures. Well, this is fun. This is what happens when I try to film. This happens almost on a 12 hour to 14 hour cycle after I wake up. Once the burning in my feet is triggered, I can no longer stand up. If I do, my feet will burn, 
Veins will bulge like one centimeter out of my feet, and the pain from standing is incomprehensible. I've literally screamed out loud and dropped to the floor many times from this. The only remedy I've found to help is going to sleep. As long as I'm not walking around or overly physically active, I can avoid early daily triggers within that 12 to 14 hour time period, but if I encounter a heat trigger, it will sometimes cause the extremity burning to start early and I will have to suffer even more throughout the day. As a guitarist, this poses great issues because when I play for extended periods of time, my fingers burn and hurt and it even prevents me from practicing and recording like I used to. Even things like sitting at my computer chair are difficult tasks because my feet will go purple and the opposite will happen causing my feet to be ice cold and painful. It seems like no matter what I do, there's no winning in any of this. The best method that has worked for me is laying in bed constantly, trying my best to be a producer for my laptop and my pajamas, all while trying to keep my mental sanity intact, which I'm sure you can imagine is a very, very difficult thing to do. One thing that has helped me a lot is my family and loved ones have helped me throughout this process a lot. I think this is the part that really helped me hold it together. Things like preparing meals for me, driving me to appointments, my grandma would even go as far as walking with me at a snail's pace outside just to add extra comfort in case of an emergency. If I can say anything, having a great support system is pivotal in this experience. I can only imagine how hard it is or how hard it must be for those who are suffering that don't necessarily have a good support system or a lot of love around them. My heart is forever dedicated to all of you. If you're listening to this and you're a parent to someone like me, just realize that as much as we may be an inconvenience to you, it's about a hundred times harder on us mentally to actually live with these conditions. Trust me, we want to run. We want to play. We want to be on sports teams and make you proud, but understand that we can't. The daily battle of this never-ending internal war, the great unknown, constantly divided and disconnected. The mental battle attached to this lifestyle is catastrophic. How many miles must be traveled before there's any sign of relief? Is feeding into the system and filling our body with pain meds and zombifying ourselves the only way that we can escape? I refuse to believe it. Aside from smoking weed a few times in high school, I've never done drugs before, I don't smoke. It was always something that mortified me, and I've seen so many people that I love consumed by them. So throughout all of this, I've suffered in pain day in and day out. It's not a feeling anyone should ever have to experience. You have to think about the mental repercussions that it has on someone. Thankfully, I'm a very stubborn and disciplined human, so I've managed to keep somewhat of my mental state controlled. However, to the boy girl out there that has no support system, I know that they are in an even worse place than me. Often such a bad place or position that they end their own lives or succumb to the medical world that is based around numbing their lives I've seen the before and after of someone that is consumed by pain drugs. It is not the outcome anyone should have, let alone the only favored one. If I'm being honest, I could go on for hours about all of this, about the depths and the intensity of it all. In courtesy of your busy schedules, I'm going to try my best to keep it as condensed as possible. Let's visit the symptoms that are encountered daily and weekly. Since 2018, there hasn't been one day of relief or a symptomless day. This is going to be a lengthy list, and it's honestly possible I will forget to mention some. Rapid heart rate, heart flutters, weird breathing patterns and difficulties, chronic leg pain, drastic weight loss, shoulder and back pain that doesn't go away with massages, sharp chest pain and irritation, burning feet, hands, and ears, burning skin when temperatures change, freezing cold hands and feet, it alternates between hot and cold, joint pain, memory loss, Difficulty finding words when speaking, memory loss. Difficult when finding words when speaking, memory, I'm just kidding. Constantly thought, (laughs) constant thoughts of dying and death. Heightened depression, anxiety, panic attacks, flashing lights, delayed and double vision, numbness, tingling in my extremities, easily irritable, chronic fatigue, blood pooling in my feet, purple feet, bulging veins, inability to sweat, body shakes, and tremors. As you can see, the list is absurd. I experience a lot of these on the daily and at the very least weekly. Prior to getting sick, my experience with most of these things were rare if ever. It's crazy how life can change so quickly 
and drastically. I'll never understand it. Part of me is in disbelief that this is even possible. There's a recurring mindset that I have that I died and I'm currently in hell. It would make a lot more sense to me. It's as if I'm looking in a mirror with an unrecognizable person staring back at me. Who have I become? Why am I this way? What happened to me? We don't know how long our story goes on for. Life is fragile. All I can say is that throughout my experience, I've learned a lot. There are many layers to life that most people will never understand, and there are still many more that I won't either. If I can use my experience to shed light on how the other side lives, that to me at least gives me continued purpose in what feels like a purposeless life. I've never been a particularly suicidal person, however I do have fantasies that death would be far easier than this. But I refuse to give up. I'll leave this earth when the universe decides my time is up here. Until then, hopefully this experience can reach someone that currently is suffering and needs to feel a bit closer to someone. I know how powerful it can be to be understood. In a world where answers are the furthest thing from common, knowing someone truly understands you is the next best thing. I've been on an extremely intense health kick and diet. For the past few months, I've practiced anti-inflammatory diets that have lots of research to prove effectiveness in chronic conditions, and you can guarantee that I will do my best to keep at it. In the miraculous event I overcome this, it's my promise that I will devote my life to raising awareness and helping others that are currently suffering from this. Hopefully that day comes, and I will be able to share a lot more promising words with people other than just my story that's based around suffering. Until then, I'll be here doing my best to find a way around this devastating condition. If you're currently struggling, newly diagnosed, or relate to anything I've mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out. The story is so much bigger than just me. Millions of people around the world are suffering daily, and it's important they have a voice too. Please, please be patient. Try to be understanding. Try to listen, even if it may seem like we're ungrateful at times, or constantly irritated. Just know that in our hearts we are so appreciative. It's honestly because of your support that we're still here fighting. It's way easier to give up than it is to fight through all of this every day. So the fact we're still here should magnify our efforts. Because most days, we don't even have the energy to get out of bed, let alone trying to enjoy and love life. I close my eyes and instantly I'm a child again. The beautiful warm air, coupled with the cooling breeze, I smile. I smile for real this time. Free from fear and worry, the days are filled with love and excitement. I can see myself running, sparkling. There's faded memories of the belief that one day I'll make people proud. Maybe someday I'll even do something extraordinary. But I open my eyes and instantly I'm surrounded by darkness again. Reality opens the door. The pain is still there. My legs are still numb. My hands hurt. Breathing is difficult. I'm scared. I'm laying in bed, crying on the inside. I want to be that child again. I feel like I've failed him. Looking back, my heart breaks at every little smile I gave. All the love that once existed within me. Where did that little boy go? Why did I end up here? I used to be so beautiful and pure. I miss him. I close my eyes often to visit who I used to be. Free from reality. Back when I didn't have to smile in pain. In the darkest moments, these were the words that spilled out of me. Basically at a point where defeat was accepted. I believe that our story has the potential to have a happy ending though. We were dealt the bad hand. However, I believe with a healthy diet, healthy mind, and the constant belief and reassurance that we will get better, anything is possible. Without that, there's nothing left to this life. There's a long fight ahead of me. I've only recently started this healthy diet. Lots of stress management is needed and alterations to my traditional lifestyle. And just overall positivity needs to come from my own choice. Nobody else can be responsible for us to take charge of our lives unless we would make that decision to do so. This condition is crippling, and it certainly won't be easy, but I have to believe it's possible to turn this around. My friends, loved ones, support system, I'm going to do everything possible to overcome this. To everyone that has helped me, stood by my side, literally helped me walk at times, you've given me the strength to keep fighting when I needed it the most. Even as I type this, I know there will be days ahead of me that are destructive, but those memories keep me going. I love all of you very much. Thank you for believing in me. God bless.
Thank you all so much for listening. This is a really, really sensitive story, and it was very difficult for me to go public with it. However, I learned that this story is so much bigger than me. There's millions around the world that don't have the strength to overcome this, and they need you. They need all the support and the awareness and the research to have assistance in overcoming this. I believe that together we can find a way to cure this. If you're watching this and you have similar symptoms or a story like mine, I just want to say I have so much love for you and you can reach out to me anytime.